What is going on, boys and girls? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of What to Throw Wednesday here on So In Outdoors. Um, hey, if you guys live in the Midwest, you are loving it for the last couple days. Highs in the mid-50s. Tomorrow we're going to see it in the mid to upper 60s. I can't wait. we got some rain coming in. It's going to get uh, kind of cold again over the weekend. But it looks like the weather's starting to settle out. Uh, I don't want to jinx this because it is still the middle of February, so we got a lot of winter ahead of us. But now that things are starting to thaw out and things are starting to uh, warm up a little bit, I want to talk to you. You know, we've covered um, several baits. You know, we, we've covered the underspin. Uh, we've covered, you know, some some uh, different crankbaits. We've covered the old school shad wraps. Uh, you know, jigs, we've covered a lot of things, and we've talked a little bit about this bait, but I want to go into a little bit more depth with it, and that is the bladed jig. It has a special, special place early, early spring, late winter, um, where it can, can be really, really good, uh, especially around submergent vegetation. Uh, any submerged vegetation, a chatterbait, bladed jig um, can be super, super effective. But I'll show you one of my little tricks that I do this time of year, and I also do it in the fall. And there's really no rhyme or reason to why or when. If it just feels right, I just do it. If it feels right, I go for it. So it's just a little modification I make. It's nothing major. Lots of guys are doing it now. Uh, me and my tournament partner, um, Will Jones, we practiced for a tournament this way a couple years ago. And man, you really didn't see anybody doing it. I'm not saying we set the trend. I'm just saying that I'm starting to see more people use this technique. Um, and, and I'm sure they've been doing it for years. But we had just stumbled across it and it was working. So I don't buy the jackhammers. And I'll tell you why. Where I throw these boogers, at the end of the day, if I get half of mine back, that's a good day. So if I throw six of these a day and I lose three of them in jackhammers, evergreen jackhammers, that's 50 bucks. <laughs> so uh, are they great baits? Yes. Uh, are they the end all to beat all of bladed jigs? No. Just a, the old original Z-Man chatter bait is what I typically will throw. So I will throw this in a 5-16s or a 3 8 uh, head depending upon what I'm fishing. So if I'm fishing uh, a lot of uh, submerged vegetation, I'm going to go a little bit lighter because I want this chatterbait to actually kind of float over top of that, that vegetation. I want it to kind of glide over it and hang in a little bit and then we're going to rip it free. And when you rip it free, that's when you get those reaction bites. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I set it up. Now, if I'm fishing around wood or timber, I'll fish a little heavier, three eighths, half ounce. Uh, and typically, the reason for that is I want that bait to thud. When it hits that laydown, it hits that branch, I want that thing to crack it. Um, and that just creates that reaction strike, especially in a little bit cooler water when these fish are a little lethargic. You're slow reeling that chatterbait or that bladed jig down the edge of that laydown, and it's doing its thing, and all of a sudden, boom, it locks up with a branch and then breaks free. That's where you get the reaction bite. So I want one that's going to thud pretty good when it hits. What I will do in the late winter, early spring, the slight modification I make is we go skirtless. Take the old skirt off of her, strip her down there. And then these fish are feeding primarily on shad this time of year. Um, so what I will do, especially around grass, is I will take a swim bait. And it don't have to be a high dollar swim bait. This one here is just a cheap old five inch swim bait that you can pick up at Bass Pro Shops or Cabela's or 
whatever Johnny Morris owns or doesn't own, you can find them. So, and I just thread that baby on there just like you would a normal trailer with the skirt on and just push her up on the head on the keeper, just like that. I will match the color of this to the shad, you know, uh, that I'm around and size to an extent, but I will typically go five inch more so than a smaller one. Two reasons. One, this longer tail, you're going to get a little bit more action out of it when that chatterbait is vibrating. Second thing is, in that cooler water, we've talked about it before, they like a bigger bait, a bigger meal. And sometimes that time of year, a little bit bigger swim bait will get the bite. Um, when I'm around grass, I will go to something that is more of a, a watermelon top with a pearl laminate belly. Just because not only do I want to imitate shad, I'm also trying to imitate bluegill. So this has a very good you know bluegill uh, imitating appearance um, but it also imitates shad as well so now can you throw it with the skirt on it yes you can um, the only thing with the skirt is I feel like it does create a little bit of drag when you're fishing in the grass and secondly it just gives this bait a little bit different look than it does um, with the skirt on uh, it's one of those things that maybe it makes a difference maybe it doesn't so you're going to fish this basically in those areas where the fish have kind of wintered for the year, but they're connected to the flats like we've talked about before, and you're going to fish this bait up pretty shallow on that shallow cover. So when this comes into effect, when the, the key moment to be throwing this bait is actually as soon as that water temperature spikes, when we get that four, five, six degree water temperature spike where we go from 38 to 44 in just a few days, that's when this dude gets real. I'm going to throw this on monofilament. I know I'm going to get some hate on that, but I throw it on monofilament because I'm fishing shallow water. I'm fishing stained water, and I just feel like that the monofilament uh, is a better setup for what I'm trying to do with that chatterbait. Uh, I can throw it on fluorocarbon, yes. I don't mind the little bit of stretch and a little bit of give with the monofilament because I'm typically going to throw it on a little bit stiffer rod than what most people would. I don't throw it on glass, I throw it on graphite. This is a seven foot moderate to medium with a fast tip, but that monofilament does allow me a little forgiveness with this bait when I'm trying to drive that hook home. I'm a slack line hook setter. Sometimes I need a little bit of forgiveness or I will pull it away from them. So if you are, try switching over to monofilament. Um, guys, hey, give it a try. Um, pick it up, throw it. If you have grass, if you don't have grass, any sort of structure that those fish are going to relate to in that three to six foot of water range as this water's warming, you get that quick spike, that quick jump, you've got to be on top of it because it can be some of the best fishing this time of year. You don't want to miss it. Thanks again, guys. We will see you out on the water. Until next time, peace out.